Hey guys, welcome back to Foil Fridays. Today we are out at one of our kind of weird wind spots on winds that don't work out on the big lake. This is Muskegon Lake behind me. I got Marco out behind me with the new Cabrina Aviate kite. I just got off that one and passed it to him. Uh, and today we're gonna do a video on some benefits of riding a shorter mast with your hydrofoil and uh, walk through some things that you know might be good or bad about that and why you might want to consider one. So let's jump into it. So we just got off the water in Muskegon Lake, having a good old time out there. Uh, riding a short mast, I was on the 28 inch slingshot mast with the Moses Onda setup, um, so the 633 front wing. And I actually swapped out for the 325 rear wing. Uh, just getting out there, having a blast. And uh, today we're gonna bring you what's great about short masts. As with all of our videos, you can go ahead and click the eye icon up in the right hand corner. Uh, if you're finding this video useful, go ahead and click in there. It's gonna give you some more in depth uh, and digestible information in there. And you can also click into products uh, to see some of the stuff we're talking about. So, short mast. What do we consider a short mast? Well, that's up for interpretation. Um, I'm gonna say anything shorter than like 30 inches, so 30 inches and below, we'll call a short mast. Most of these are gonna end up in the 24 uh, to 28 inch range, or that's like 60 to 70 centimeters, if you're using centimeters, depending on the brand. Um, some benefits of short mast. Number one, learning. So if you're just getting into the sport, short masts are really gonna allow you an ease of entry uh, that long masts will not. So when you're shorter mast, you're not quite as high off the water. If you surface a wing and come crashing down, you're not gonna be as high, so the fall is gonna not hurt as much. But then also, if you're on a bigger board like you probably should have when you're getting into the sport, the longer nose is gonna allow that to refract off the water and allow you to keep riding rather than crashing and recovering all the time, which is really good, especially because most people want to get out there and foil when it's light wind. The second big benefit uh, for short mass is simply due to water depth. So if you're in an area that's shallow, uh, or maybe you want to ride in a zone that's shallow at your spot, uh, chasing waves or just coming closer to shore, uh, a lot of those light wind days, um, you know, you want to stay close to the shore so your swim isn't as far, especially if you live in a cold environment uh, like we do this time of the year. It really pays to stay a little closer to shore just in case you need to swim in. Uh, chasing waves on the inside, obviously, if you're chasing small waves in the break zone, you're probably dealing with some shallow water in those zones. You don't want to damage your wings. You don't want to hit bottom and fall. Uh, so a shorter mass is going to allow you to enter those zones and have your fun and get out without running into that problem. A third benefit uh, for short masts has to do with riding in lighter winds. So in light winds, short masts can be beneficial for a number of reasons. Uh, the first reason is that they have less drag. So less mast in the water, there's less drag, that means you're more efficient on your foil. If you're more efficient, that means you don't need as much kite or you can actually go lower wind uh, than you would normally. Lastly, long masts are really only going to be beneficial to those riders riding in large chop uh, or riding at high speeds. So again, in light wind, generally you're not going all that fast. Um, most locations you're not going to have very large chop. You may have open ocean swell or tide driven swell, but those larger interval swells you can make over no problem with a shorter mast. So get out there, have fun with that short mast and uh, enjoy that. So other than just shallow water, another reason to have a short mast is riding area where there's kind of an undefined depth. Uh, so there's a spot here on Muskegon Lake that we ride that has some rocks and things in the water and the water depth varies where we ride. It's kind of hard to judge, uh, especially because the water is a little bit murky. So having a short mast is going to allow you to pass by those without any trouble. However, if I had something like a 40 inch mast and I was riding in that same zone, I would without question find a rock from time to time and that would spell disaster for both my wings and my session. So the last reason to have a short mast really doesn't have anything to do with kiteboard hydrofoiling, but more to do with wake or surf sup uh, and windsurf foiling as well. 
Having a shorter mast is going to allow you to cross over into those sports more easily. Uh, behind a boat, your average mast length is between 23 and 28 inches. Uh, in the surf, kind of the same thing, 23 to 28 inches. Um, so having those on hand is going to allow you to have fun in those other sports and uh, get out there and just make the most of the gear you already own. So we've already touched on this a little bit, but there's real two basic reasons why you would not want a short mast. The first is if you're dealing with large chop in your area. If you have chop, let's say over a foot to 18 inches tall, and it's just really inconsistent and hard to predict, it's gonna be really hard to make your way through that at a decent speed um, while adjusting for those pitches on your foil. So having a little bit longer mass gets the wings a little bit deeper, gets it out of that current uh, and turbulation that those waves and chop are producing, and just allows a smoother ride with less worry of surfacing your wings. Lastly, if you're riding at really high rates of speed, you're gonna want a long mast for sure. For those people out there doing that, generally you're leaning hard against the kite, so you're at an angle uh, in the water with your mast, which means you need a longer mast to pre prevent the wings from surfacing on the water. Additionally, when you're moving that fast, you can't adjust pitch of your board as quickly as you're moving over swell and chop so you need to be able to pass through it without having to adjust that pitch. A longer mast will allow you to do that and leave you riding away with less worry at those high end speeds. If you're interested in this video, be sure to click on the eye icon. That's gonna take you to our written blog with more information on the subject. If you like this video, as always, give us a big old thumbs up, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel. You have a good day. This has been Tucker with Foil Fridays.